Welcome to week 5 of the Northern Shield Academy. I'm Oscar, and this week I'll be teaching you about aiming, shot calling, and decision making. To begin, let's hop into the different guns found in Valorant and how to use their spray pattern to practice your recoil control. In Valorant, there are sidearms which are mainly used at the start of the matches and if you're saving money. The classic is a free semi-automatic pistol in Valorant with a 12 round magazine, good at close range combat. Shorty is a 200 credit semi-automatic shotgun with a two round magazine, only good at very close range combat. Frenzy is a 500 credit full automatic pistol with a 13 round magazine, which is good at close to medium range combat. Ghost is a 500 credit silent semi-automatic pistol with a 15 round magazine. It's a high damaging pistol and good at any range of combat. Sheriff is an 800 credit semi-automatic pistol with a six round magazine, which is the highest damaging sidearm that can penetrate walls and it's good at any range of combat. Moving on to submachine guns, we have a Stinger that costs 1100 credits, which has a 20 round magazine. It's a high fire rate gun and good at close range combat. Spectre is a silent submachine gun that costs 1600 credits with a 30 round magazine, better recoil and a little better at longer range than the Stinger. Moving on to shotguns, we have a Bucky that costs 900 credits, which is a pump action semi-automatic shotgun with a five round magazine. Each shot shoots 15 pellets, the closer you are to the enemy, the closer the bullet spread, the more damage. Judge is a 1600 credit fully automatic shotgun with a magazine size of 7. Moving on, we have Bulldog, a 2100 credit assault rifle with a magazine size of 24. Decent fire rate, decent damage. Guardian is a 2400 credit semi-automatic assault rifle with a magazine size of 12. It has the highest damage per bullet of all the assault rifles. Phantom is a 2,900 credit fully automatic assault rifle with a magazine size of 30, highest fire rate out of all of the assault rifles. Vandal is a 2,900 credit fully automatic assault rifle with a magazine size of 25, and it has high DPS at any range. Marshall is a 1,000 credit semi-automatic sniper rifle with a magazine size of 5. Operator is a 5,000 credit semi-automatic sniper rifle with a magazine size of 5, which is the highest damaging gun in Valorant, and it one-shots the body. Ares is a 1600 credit fully automatic light machine gun with a magazine size of 50. It has high fire rate and decent damage at all ranges. Odin is a 3200 credit fully automatic light machine gun with a magazine size of 100. It has high fire rate, high damage, and high wall penetration. Looking more specifically into fully automatic guns, they all have set spray patterns. And what that means is that every time you shoot the gun, you'll generally know where every bullet should go. And you can use that spray pattern to make all your bullets shoot straight. To show you any gun spray pattern, get a fully automatic gun and shoot it into the wall without moving your mouse. I'll be using the Phantom to explain it. Here we can see that when we start shooting the Phantom, roughly the first eight bullets will go up and slightly to the left or right. Then anything after 8 bullets, it'll stay at a certain height, but then sway left to right. So we can use this information to control the recoil and have better precision. To do this with your mouse, you need to pull it in the opposite direction your bullets are coming out. So because we know that the first 8 bullets come out in a slight slant going upwards, we need to pull our mouse down and slightly over like this. You can see that my crosshair is moving down and slightly over, but my bullets are still going straight. You can do this with any fully automatic gun. I would like to note that because after almost 8 bullets it looks a little random which way it's going to sway and when, we typically shoot in bursts up to 8 bullets. It's similar with the Vandal. Also the recoil of a gun looks amplified when you are taking longer range gunfights, meaning it's easier to control recoil when it's very close range, then when it's at long range, we burst fire with less bullets. Now that we've learned recoil control, let's talk about crosshair placement. In Valorant you do the most damage if you hit the enemy's head. So with that in mind, we want to be trying to aim at the enemy's head when it's taking fights. To start practicing this, if you're unsure about where head level is, try to find things that are already head level and keep your crosshair at that height when taking fights. The best way to make sure your head level is to aim at your own teammate's head that's on the same height level as you. Keep in mind that not everyone in Valorant is on the same height, so your crosshair placement could be off. So you may have to change the height you put your crosshair when approaching a fight. An example of this is on Haven. When attacking A site, when I aim at my head level and swing, 
we can see that A long is sloped down, meaning my crosshair placement will be above the enemy's head. Similarly, when I'm attacking B at my head level, we can see that the B site is sloped a little bit up, meaning my crosshair placement will be roughly at their feet. If you don't already know about the different heights your opponents can be, this will come over time by playing the game. Another thing I want to cover about crosshair placements is when you're holding an angle. You want to find a balance of not holding an angle too tight and not holding an angle too wide. If you hold an angle tight and your enemy swings wide, you need to flick your crosshair to them before killing them. Same with holding it too wide. If they don't swing wide, then you have to adjust your crosshair placement to account for their swing. In an ideal scenario, you hold a little off the swing so that when they do swing, you have a fast enough reaction time to only shoot and not move your crosshair. Another thing I want to cover for crosshair placement is about challenging one angle at a time. Ideally, every gunfight you take is only a 1v1. And to try to make that happen, you need not to expose yourself to a lot of angles at once. And in combination of not exposing yourself to too many angles at once, you need to place your crosshair at angles you're trying to clear at head level. So once you take that challenge, then you can move on to the next angle, eventually clearing every angle that the enemies are potentially going to be. Here's an example using the spike diffuse practice in the training mode. Here I try to isolate as many 1v1s as I can by aiming head level and not exposing myself to too many angles without me clearing them first. Obviously you cannot achieve this in every scenario, but by practicing gunfights like this, it'll help you play more consistently. Last thing I want to talk about when it comes to crosshair placement is making sure that you're warmed up. If you're anything like me, when you first try to hop on your computer and try playing games, you feel a little sluggish. Your muscles are a little stiff, meaning you might have to move your arm more when trying to aim or whatever the case may be. A couple of things I recommend doing. First one is I recommend using Aim Labs. Aim Labs is a free game on Steam that trains your aiming, whether it's flicking, reaction time, tracking, whatever. It spawns in these targets and you can practice aiming on them. I do this before hopping into any game to make sure that I'm feeling like limbered up and ready to go. And this is what Aim Lab looks like. Other things you can do is just hop into Valorant, hop into the training range and just practice shooting targets or you can even hop in death matches. Hopping into decision making, your agent and role on a team can determine the decisions you make in a game. To start, we can briefly explain the guns that typically agents use. Every gun is viable for every agent in the game. Your choice of gun should depend on what position you are holding. If you're holding close range, like on bind in Uka or U-Haul, you're able to use a shotgun effectively. If you're holding a long angle or going to be pushing a long angle, you know, a phantom or a vandal can work. The only gun limitation I would put on agents would be the operator. It is the single most expensive weapon in the game, and if you die, your economy drops a lot. Again, I want to preface that anyone can use an operator, but it's best suited for people with mobility abilities so they can catch people off guard and have the ability to safely get out of the situation. We typically see Jet and Omen as the operators of the teams. When you're thinking about what to purchase, you have to think about what agent you are playing and what your teammates have already bought. If you're in a moment where you can only buy abilities or a gun and armor, you have to check if you're an agent that is primarily a utility agent like Breach or Sova, for example, and additionally if your teammates can support a full buy or not. You shouldn't be wasting your credits on a Vandal and full armor if your team can only be buying pistols. Quickly to talk about how and when to approach a gunfight, the objective when approaching a gunfight is to put pressure on the enemy, enough so that you can either kill the enemy or force them to fall back. Then ideally, once you gain that control, your team can capitalize and win that round. But to make sure that can happen, you don't want to be too predictable. What I mean by that is you don't want to do the exact same over and over again. If your team rushes a site repeatedly, the enemies should pick up on that and they should take measures to prevent you from repeatedly rushing that site. Also, let's say you keep flashing out of garage doors on Haven every round to kill enemies. Eventually, they should pick up on that and either contest you there or avoid you completely. So even though you're doing your job, which is to put pressure, you don't want to keep putting the exact same pressure because then they will have that information on you. Whereas if you approach the situation from a different angle or don't even peek after constantly playing aggressive, your enemies are constantly on their toes waiting for you to do something. To keep emphasizing this, we can even do this when capturing an ultimate orb on any map. On maps like Ascent, it's very easy for the attackers to capture either of the ultimate orbs. Your team should be trying to gain control of at least one of those orbs, but if for three rounds in a row the attackers go directly to A main to capture the orb and the defenders don't counterattack it, 
it can leave a false sense of security for the attackers so that on the the fourth attempt of them trying to capture that orb the defenders can make that call to come a main get ready for you guys to pick up that orb and then use the abilities and swing onto the people trying to get the a ultimate orb one last thing about approaching gunfights is knowing your win condition if you ever find yourself in a 3v5 scenario where you're down in numbers and you're trying to go for that win, you need to understand that you are in a scenario where it's clearly not in your favor. And if everyone on the other team ideally is playing all together, they're supporting each other, it's going to be impossible to win. So you need to understand that your win condition there is to play risky and challenge things that aren't to the book. You need to take a risk and try to gain control of something without being detected. You need to raw peak angles. You need to hide in smoke. You need to push through smoke. Anything to potentially catch your opponents off guard, potentially get a couple of those picks when they are least expecting it. So you can potentially turn the tides of that round and win that round. If you have any questions about decision making, please ask in the Discord chat. That's it for this week. And as always, if you haven't done so already, follow us on all social medias at NShield Academy. And you can follow myself on Twitter at Osper4. There's a lot of depth when it comes to decision-making contesting grounds, so try to ask some questions. Next week, we'll be covering how to create content around your game, self-branding, social media, and PR. See you all next week. Hey, it's Mike here again. What's the most important thing for gamers? Speed, performance, form factor? For me, it's RGB lighting. I don't know about you, but I play better, more agile, and have quicker reactions when I set my RGB mode. Corsair IQ software, spelled I-C-U-E, synchronizes with all your Corsair peripherals with smart lighting and reacts to your gameplay. I would love to see your gaming setup. Tag Seagate Gaming on social media, and I'll be sure to check it out. Well, guys, it was a slice this week. I'll see you next week.